swimming pools. We were going to have our own personal chef. We realized all of a sudden we were broke. My cousin who was visiting that night said, you ought to get an Amway. I looked at him. I said, are you an Amway? No. <laughs> have you ever been an Amway? No. Do you ever suppose you will ever be an Amway? He said, no. I said, well, why then should I get an Amway? He said, you're the one that's talking about needing more money. So we got on the phone. We called an Amway distributor. And the next day we started our Amway business. That was 43 years ago. Everybody's not somewhere. We zoomed our way to platinum. Then it was called direct distributor. In a mere 26 months, working every day, you say, well, that's not so fast. No, it wasn't so fast. We were struggling, quite frankly. We were trying to figure out not only how to be married, but how to build a business and stay married. And some of you know, that ain't easy. <laughs> we went to a conference, we sat there, and we got so frustrated because we weren't moving forward in our business. And so we began to experiment and examine the ingredients of success. What real leadership looked like. What real leadership was all about. And we tried to decide what is the most important ingredient of leadership. And what is it that we should focus on and work on to move on up to Ruby and to Sapphire and to Emerald. We thought about keeping the dream alive. And my, that's important. We thought about concepts like uh, expectation and belief and attitude. And we worked on all of those things. And then in working through that, we stumbled upon the single most important ingredient of success. And that's what I want to share with you today. Because unless you understand this ingredient, then you will stay where you are. And here it is. Write this word down. The most important ingredient of success is change. We wanted our world to change, but we weren't willing to change. We discovered right away that if you do the same, you'll get the same. That the same always produces the same. And if you leave your new Platinum Conference unchanged, then you will go home and do the same things you did before you came here. And here's what we discovered at Platinum. Your charisma, your natural talent, your ability just to talk to people will get you to Platinum, but it will not take you to the land of your dreams. If you really want to be an emerald, if you really want to be a diamond, if you really want a generational business that you can move your heirs into in later years, then you'll need to face the pain of change head on and stare it right in the eye. Only change creates a new future. When we stay the same, we stay the same. So here's the question for all of us today. Are we willing to change or do we just want things to change? I'm going to say it again because the translation just got through. Are we willing to change or do we just want things to change? Yep. I have to admit to you, I wanted things to change. I wanted my life to be different, but I wasn't willing to be different. I wanted the me that I brought to this business to be the me that would march into Diamond Club. And the fact is... The you that you brought to the New Platinum Conference is not the you that will take you to Diamond Club. And between today and your first day at Diamond Club, there will be significant changes in your life. These are not to be feared. These are to be expected. These are to be lifted up. These are to be celebrated. So in the next few minutes, we'll think about change in three questions. Change why, change what, and change how. Everybody's reason to change is probably different. 
Some of them might be the same, but the truth is we are individuals. We speak different languages, we look different, some of us are, are white, some of us are light brown, some of us are dark brown, some of us are kind of in between. Does it really matter? What matters is what's inside our head. And most people spend more money in their lifetime taking care of the outside of their head than they do the inside of their head. When in fact, ugly people go diamond, negative people don't. So, I hope you will be the ugliest diamond that ever made it. Because when you get there, you are celebrated not because of the way you look, but because of the way you think. So why do people change? I wrote down a whole list of things. Maybe this is kind of an expose of our life. Sometimes we change because we're dissatisfied. We were dissatisfied, not malcontent, but dissatisfied. We didn't like our house. Now, do you realize how immature that is to dislike an inanimate object? Very immature. But some of us are driven by that. I didn't want my wife to spend the rest of her life in a house that was smaller than this stage. It didn't seem right. We were discontented with our car. We didn't want fancy cars. We just wanted one that would start every time. You know what I'm saying? Now, living in Florida, if your car doesn't start, it's no big deal. If you lived up here, you'd die if your car didn't start. I remember one Christmas, we had one car that didn't start all the time, and I bought my wife, wonderful Terry, I bought her jumper cables for her car. I told her it'd be a great way to meet people. <laughs> yeah, she didn't buy into it either. And some people are just ambitious. They want to be diamond. They want to move from the new platinum seminar because they're driven by ambition. They have thought about this. They said, platinum is good. I can't even imagine how good ruby and sapphire and emerald and diamond must be. And maybe you're that person. Maybe you're sitting in your seat right now and you're thinking, let me out of here. I want to go home tomorrow, not the day after tomorrow. I want to go on, I want to move. Maybe you're driven by ambition, or maybe it's your family. And I gotta tell you guys, that will never change. We built our business as singles. We built it as newlyweds. We built it with babies. We built it with teenagers. That was the hardest part, by the way. We built it with teenagers, and now with adult married children, we have two boys. And I will tell you, it never changes. The way you feel about your babies right now, it is only extended and expanded when they're in their 20s and their 30s. You love them so much, you want the best for them. But as a dad, when they're little, you just want them to eat their dinner and go to bed. When they're 35, you want to make sure you've instilled in them concepts of leadership, concepts of manliness, concepts of patriotism, concepts of spirituality, Things that sustain the soul when life gets difficult. And I will tell you, my experience is that what you learn from your business, the changes that you make, the contortions that you will go through mentally will affect your family. Your children will be better. They'll be more dynamic. They'll be better citizens than if you were not successful. So what do you want for your family? You want more time to be with them. You want more options. You want to make sure they're secure financially. You want to make sure that you provide them with experiences. Love growing up with my sons. And they would talk to their schoolmates about, yeah, we just got back from Greece. Or we just had a terrific trip to Europe. Or we were in Hawaii every year. Yeah, we go to Hawaii every year. Don't you want your children to have those kinds of experiences? That's why change is so important. Or maybe it's lifestyle. Maybe it's lifestyle. I personally think money is way overrated. That's my opinion. I believe money is way overrated. And I think what you want is not driven by greed. It's driven by a desire to live a lifestyle 
that is comfortable for your family. Some people want this lifestyle, some want this lifestyle, some want this lifestyle. If your lifestyle is to earn enough money so you can invest more time in your church, then this business can give you that lifestyle. If you want to earn enough money so you can uh, put more time into charitable work in foreign countries, then that's your lifestyle. But our business is flexible enough that every one of you can choose the lifestyle you want. And I promise you, your upline will never stick you in a hole and say, we require you to have this lifestyle or that lifestyle. What a business. Or maybe it's your charitable giving. Maybe you see people in need around the world, and you yourself are in need. And you're thinking, as Rich the Boss said, how are you going to help them when you haven't learned to help you? And so maybe that's your why to change. Maybe you're thinking, wow, there are people in my own family that really need somebody in our family to stand up, to be different, to set an example, to set a new pace. We need first generation thinking and it's up to me. Will you take that responsibility? If you will, that's your why to change. And that's your reason. Number two, change what? Change what? You can't just go out and change. Change without a purpose. Change without an understanding of what we are changing is just a ridiculous exercise in futility. It makes no sense. So here's what I would say to you. By the way, I reserve the right to be wrong. Okay? Just because I'm saying these things doesn't mean they're inspired from on high. I'm giving you my opinion. I have 43 years of, of business experience. Most of those were wasted years. A few of them I did really, really well. But I've had a lot of experience. So here's what I would say to you. Number one, you may need to change your priorities. If you want to be a diamond, things have to change. You can't live in the old world and live in the new world simultaneously. You can't plant one foot firmly in the past and one foot firmly in the future and look decent. Strange. You've got to move. Either live in the past and get happy about it or move to the future and get over the past. If we allow our past to dictate our future, we will live in the past and we will be the past and we will be irrelevant to the future. So we move into the future. Change your priorities. You may need to change your television schedule. I know some of you are very dedicated to your television. I know how important that is to you. We call it the electronic income reducer, the television. And you have people like that in your organization. Well, we have a meeting Tuesday night. I sure hope you can come. Oh, Tuesday night. That's the, the, uh, the brand new America's Got Talent premiere is on Tuesday night. You expect me to give up You've Got Talent for my future? You've got to be kidding. Come on. You may need to change your television schedule. You may be a closet television addict. Turn it off. I had one guy in my organization who took his television out in the forest and shot it with a shotgun. I don't recommend that. But for him, it was symbolic of his future. You may have to give up your desire to have a six-pack abs. Some of you are spending more time in the gym than you are showing the plan. Let me tell you, if you get a little pooch on you going diamond, it'll be worth it. <laughs> All diamonds sitting around the pool in Hawaii have a little belly. It's good! Okay. Which would you rather be? Like a really six-pack ab platinum or a little pudgy diamond? Come on. You may spend a little less time in your garden. Oh, there's a weed. Oh, that, that, that. No, I can't show the plant. I just planted the petunias. Right? Come on, guys. We may need to shift those priorities just a little bit so we can take our eyes off of the old and put our eyes on the new. Take our eyes off the past and put our eyes on the future. Your family will thank you for that. 
friend of mine says, we must give up what we don't want to make room for what we do want. I'll say it again. We must give up what we don't want to make room for what we do want. We may need to change our priorities. We may need to change our thinking. As a matter of fact, I absolutely guarantee you, you will need to change your thinking. Our present thinking got us to the present. Our present thinking will not get us to the future of our dreams. One of the best things that ever happened to me in business was early on in our business. And you gotta remember, this was in 1970. For some of you, that was two lifetimes ago. I know that. There was a 1970. It came right after 1969. That's the way years work. But my sponsor said to me, you know what? You're gonna have to learn some things. And I don't have time to teach you all these things, so I want you to listen to these tapes. Yes, tapes. Not cassette tapes. This was before cassette tapes were invented. If you don't know what a cassette tape is, Google cassette tapes, and it will show you. But before cassette tapes, there were reel-to-reel -reel tapes. They still use this in analog professional studios. But it's taped on a round reel, and you'd put it on a tape machine with an empty reel here, and you would play it, and it would run through onto this side, and you would take this one, turn it over, and run it the other way. So you would play tracks one and three this way, tracks two and four this way. He gave me seven reel-to-reel -reel tapes, five-inch reels. They were, were recorded at one and seven-eighths inches per second. That's seven hours per tape. He gave me seven tapes. He said, listen to each one seven times. <laughs> seven tapes, seven hours, seven times. That's what he said. We were going to get married. We wanted to make money. I didn't turn to my upline and say, you've got to be kidding. Do you think I'm stupid? I figured out he could make more money if I made more money. Why would he take time to ask me to do something that was going to hurt my income? Of course it was going to increase my income. So we listened to those seven tapes, seven hours, seven times. And we were never the same. We were never the same. From our first week in business, we realized we're different. We're entrepreneurs. We're free enterprisers. We have our feet firmly set in the future of America. We want to be free. We want to be debt free. We want to be free from the encumbrance of mortgages. Say, good grief, you got a little carried away. Yes, we did. We got fired up because for the first time in our life, we realized that we could control our future by controlling our thinking. That we could show the plan once a month, we could show it once a day, or we could show it once an hour. We could live in a little tiny apartment, or we could live in a mansion. We could drive 20-year-old cars, or we could get a new car every year. We could vacation on the beach in Florida, 20 minutes from where we live, or we could vacation on the beaches of Fiji. We determined, we understood from listening to those tapes that our future was in our hands. It's a phenomenal discovery. William James, the father of modern day psychology said, the discovery of mankind is that we can change our future by changing our thinking. He went on to say that little rabbits have something called protective coloring so they can blend in with their environment. He said, humans are different. We can change our environment to blend in with us. That's the secret of success. You take control of your environment and then you, you change it. Number three thing, that would be a change what? Change your habits. Habits. What do we think about every day? What do we do every day? What are our habits that drive us? Everyday actions, products, people, plans, events, thoughts, listening, learning, and point number three, change how. I'm gonna give you five points here because the melancholy's in the room.
like to write things down. So here we go. Five points. Number one, you want to change your life and change your future and change yourself. Number one, decide. It's shocking to me as I've worked with people around the world for 40 plus years, how few people make a decision to change. They want to change. They think about changing all the time. They want everybody else in their group to change. They want everybody to do more volume. They want everybody to go platinum. They want the government to change. They want the leaders of the government to change. They want the weather to change, but they've never thought about, made a decision to change. The good thing about a decision is you can do it now. Where you sit without leaving this room, you can make a decision. And I know ladies, you're wanting to hit him right in the ribs now and say, dude, he's talking to you. I get that, I know that. How do I know? Because many times have I been hit in the ribs, <laughs> wonderful Terry saying, they're talking to you. <laughs> Decide, stare down the pain of change. Now I'll tell you what this is gonna do. This is gonna make other people around you very uncomfortable. When you start changing, the people who are willing to change will say things about you. Oh, you think you're better than us? Oh, you don't play cards on Friday night anymore? Why, you better than us? Oh, you don't want to go to the game on Saturday? You think you're better than us? No, here's what I think. I think my future's gonna be different than yours. That's what I think. I'm not better than you. Number one, decide. Number two, write out a plan. We need a plan for doing what we're gonna do. Number three, become accountable to someone. Preferably your upline. Become accountable. Tell them the changes you're going to make. Tell them your plan for making those changes and then become accountable to them. Number four, make a commitment. Make a commitment. Not make a statement. Make a commitment. Back in the day, we used every talk we gave from stage. Every time we would get in front of a group, we would talk about commitment. Make a commitment. We would talk about burning desire. Get those two words burning desire, not just desire. And here's the way we would explain it. That if you see a house on fire, you say to yourself, oh, that's too bad. If you see a house on fire and it's yours and your child is in there, you're going in the burning house. That's burning desire. It changes your action about what you feel. And so burning desire to change. And number five, realize that you can hit the reset button as often as, want, as you want. If you don't like the speed of the change, you decide the pace. Just hit the reset button. Okay, I didn't change much last month. I'm going to hit the reset button. I'm going to listen to more CDs. I'm going to read more books. I'm going to go to more meetings. I'm going to be more, more committed. I'm going to show more plans. And finally, I would suggest that you use John Maxwell's Law of Five. I was recently with John in California, and John said every book he's ever written, and John Maxwell, the number one leadership trainer probably in the world, has written 73 books. Do you realize how difficult that is? I probably haven't read 73 books. <laughs> to write 73 books? He said he has always used the law of five. He gets up every day, and he does five things before the day is over. On Christmas Day, he does those five things. On his birthday, he does those five things. Days when he's sick, he does those five things. On Sunday, he does those five things. Every day, those five things. And here's what John says. He says, if you take an ax and you go to the biggest tree you can find, and every day you take five swings on that tree, lay down the ax. Come back the next day, five swings on that tree. Lay out the axe. Come back the next day. Five swings on that tree. He said, there is no tree in the world that eventually will not fall. Five swings a day. Five swings a day. Five swings a day. Everything will happen with just five swings a day. It's not based on the power of today. It's based on the consistency of tomorrow. Write that down, that was brilliant, and I just thought of it. <laughs> I can't say it again, I just thought of it, now it's gone. <laughs> you should be a better note taker. <laughs> so here are the five things I'd recommend to you. I'm not gonna leave you just 
with an ambiguity. Here are the five things I'd say. Number one, read every day. Read every day. Your upline, the approved provider that you're a part of, they have recommended books. Read every day. But not only read the book they're recommending, read some of the classics. Go back to some of the ones that I read in 1970, like The Magic of Thinking Big, Think and Grow Rich, How I Raised Myself from Failure to Success in Selling. The, these, Ambo used to even sell these books years ago. Classic books, books about how we think. Read every day. Number two, listen every day. You probably have access to some CDs, motivational, training, instructional. Listen, if you're not growing as fast as you want to, listen more. Make non-productive time, productive time. On our way to Diamond, we mounted a speaker in our shower. A speaker in our shower. And on the back of the toilet was a cassette player. And before Terry or I would step into the shower, the cassette player would go on and we would shower and learn. Listen, if you're over 20 years old, there's nothing new to discover in the shower anyway. You might as well be learning, right? <laughs> learn in the shower. Listen every day. Number three, encourage somebody every day. Encourage somebody or encourage multiple people. Pick up the phone and say, I was just thinking of you. I just want you to know. I love you, I appreciate you, and I believe in your future. Encourage somebody every day. Number four, meet two new people every day. Today, meet two new people. You don't have to get a name. You don't have to get a business card. You don't have to set up an appointment. Forget it. Just meet two new people every day. Meeting people will become a habit, and it will change your life. And finally, show one every day. One plan or one product. Show one every day. One is the loneliest number, Three Dog Night. One is the loneliest number. It's a single number. You can show one every day. Show one plan or show one product every day. So here's the bottom line. You can change. God made you in a way that you can change. You just make a decision. Today you may be thinking like a platinum, but in the future you'll be thinking like a diamond. And the land of Diamond Club, the world of Diamond, is in the future. God bless you. And God bless you.